Good afternoon, joiners or hunker downers, as um, the guy who plays Beverly Leslie, what's he called? Um, oh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, he calls us hunker downers during lockdown. I am in my kitchen in London, and I'm going to be joined this afternoon by the very wonderful friend of mine, Emma Sims Hilditch, who runs Sims Hilditch. And my mother told me today that I said her name so fast that she couldn't really understand what I was saying. So I want to say we're going to be joined by Emma Sims Hilditch, who runs the wonderful design practice in London, in London and in near Bath called Sims Hilditch. And I can see she's requested to come in, which is really exciting. And I'm really, really thrilled to have Emma join us because she has an incredibly beautiful, quiet, gentle aesthetic. And I think you'll pick that up from the kind of person that she is. And she's been spending most of lockdown in Cornwall and doing lots of wonderful cooking, which is going to be, um, which I want to hear all about. And um, so I've spent the day in London, which is coming back to life. You'll be pleased to know. And so I've got a different background. It's not a digital background. It's my kitchen in London. And I thought it was good to stay in a kitchen. So um, I'm going to just go on and accept Emma's request. And and I'm hoping that she will join soon and that we will be have an okay connection. Hi. <laughs> there she is. How are you, lovely Emma? Hi, so lovely to see you, Justin. I'm very well. How are you? I'm great. Where are you? I'm actually in London now. I've moved. Ah, I came up this morning. When did you come up? Um, I came up today. I, I had to go to a meeting in um, Sussex today. So I travelled up last night halfway to Bath and then stayed the night in Bath from Cornwall and then um, went to Sussex and now have come to London. So I've been doing a trip of the whole country. It's been a trip of the whole country. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And how have you found the roads? Did you find the roads very busy? And, uh, well, yeah, from Cornwall, it was incredible. There was no traffic at all. But then once we got into sort of towards the city centre, yeah, it's horrible again. It makes me realise I felt quite stressed by the whole experience. <laughs> and was it your first sort of time to come up to have a meeting to... Yeah. It was lovely to it was lovely to get back into things again. I mean, I'm sure you're the same, Justin. It's like you're just you're just back in London as well now, and um, I think it's yeah. We had a crazy day, so today was kind of get the showroom back together after three months of complete neglect. Um, yeah. And yeah. so um, the, the, um, everyone was there, and it was really wonderful actually to just all be together. I'm and because um, I can't hear you very well. Sorry, or well, maybe your volume is. <laughs> and I, I left. And I, let me see if I can turn my volume up a little bit. I'm turning mine up too, then I can hear you better. And I left, I left everyone um, sort of having a bit of a drink and, and I rushed up to my kitchen and it's a different backdrop to, to the other talks that I've had. So you're my first guest in my London kitchen. Yes, I um, your kitchen. I had dinner in your lovely kitchen. Not exactly, so. exactly. So it's <laughs> familiar to you. Emma, you spent, you've spent most of lockdown in Cornwall. Yeah. In yeah. St. Moors. Is there, a, is there a special connection to St. Moors? Um, we've been going there for about 30 years and um, we, we, we have a sort of sailing, um, my husband is a sailor and um, my, in fact before I met John, um, I, uh, my parents used to go to St Moore's and stay with a friend of theirs down there. So it was sort of like St Moore's had always been part of our family holiday kind of experience and um, for the first, I guess, 25 years of married life, we just went down there on holiday, bucket and spade with the kids. And then we would um, go sailing there. We, we managed to acquire a beautiful sailing boat. So we spent time sailing and living on board the boat. Um, it's saying that it's not a great connection. I hope that it's not my end. I don't know. I, I'm finding it fine. I'm finding your connection fine. Okay. Um, so yeah, just keep going. <laughs> um, and, then, um, and then eventually, um, yeah, I think um, I was sort of, as, as um, you know, I was desperate to try and get, find a little bolt hole that we could, stay in that we could have family we could have friends to stay and we came across this beautiful little and i call it a cottage it's like a it's a bungalow with one story upstairs with one bedroom and we ended up renovating the whole place but you know it's small but it's we managed to um sort of maximize it and, and it's got um, wonderful views and a wonderful garden and an arga in the kitchen which you've been cooking up a storm <laughs> Now, are you, am I wrong? Are you vegan? I am. I am. Is that a new thing? Because I don't remember that. And John is. We both are now. Um, we have been for about um, a year. Uh, yeah, about a year. 
and um, it's quite a new thing. I think we watched that show, The Game Changer. Yeah. Um, that changed it all for me <laughs> and for him. I think we just thought, actually, I mean, you know, that lots of people would say that The Game Changer um, is a load of rubbish and, you know, don't listen to it, the rest of it. But for, for both of us, it just spoke so much sense. And for, for all the reasons, you know, like the animal welfare, um, the environment, but also our health. So we've yeah. gone for it. And we'll see. Fantastic. We'll... So, and you've really gone for it. Emily, may I ask you quickly, um, is my picture pixelated? You look good. For me, you look great. <laughs> You're not pixelated. Because if, if my connection goes slower, I'll be pixelated in your screen. Um, so what have you been cooking? Um, well, I, I started off with, um, I mean, basically with plant-based cooking, you have to really think, it's quite scary, the beginning stages of it. You really do need to go for a kind of a recipe book or get some inspiration because I had no idea what I was doing. And we'd <laughs> actually been, um, we'd been in Asia um, last autumn and interestingly in, in China you know a lot of it is plant-based although interestingly as Asia becomes more and more wealthy they're eating a lot more meat now so it's kind of a bit sad it's kind of going the other way they're becoming yeah. westernized but um, I was really interested in trying to make different recipes with tofu um, there's all these other really cool things as well but tofu is the main one that we use quite a lot and I, I made these kind of amazing, um, what I, they're kind of meatballs, but with no meat. <laughs> 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 they have, um, have lots of delicious, um, they have sesame oil. You mush it all up with um, buckwheat flour, with chives, with garlic. And then you make them into these like patties and you stir fry them. That was good. <laughs> Fantastic. And do you, do you get to sail sort of most evenings when you're there or? We try and get out on our sailing boat, and yeah, in the last um, you know few days before we came away, um, it started raining again. But we have had some amazing weather, so we go to the Helford River, which is um, it's about a forty-minute sail from St Moore's, and you just go up. It's very romantic. It's like where uh, Daphne du Maurier wrote *The Frenchman's Creek*, <laughs> and it's it's gorgeous. Yeah. So for those who don't know, St Moore's is at the bottom of at the bottom of England, is the bottom of Cornwall. On, yeah, the, how, on the east side, on the um, Roseland Peninsula. It's on the Roseland, that's right. Oh, you have done your homework. Well, no, we, we actually, we, we try and get to Cornwall sort of once every 18 months. And we always go to Port Holland, which is about sort of half an hour from Cornwall. Oh, I love Port Holland as well. And it's really pretty. And we try and stay on the Cahers Estate, which is, which is lovely. And um, it's just I, such a lovely, lovely spot. Amazing. It's amazing. And um, so, so St. Moore's is quite special to us. In fact, we sat in a in a pub in St. Moore's and designed this kitchen on a, and I've still got it on a sort of a napkin. We had yeah. the space and we got planning permission while we were, were there. We we're like, okay, well, let's design the kitchen. And Alice and I sat and sketched it out. And it kind of turned out pretty much like, like we planned. We've got um, some great So did you, you, when lockdown came, you headed to Cornwall? No, 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 we were already there, I have to say, uh, because if you, if you headed to Cornwall as lockdown was announced, you would not be very popular, but we were already there, luckily. I mean, I say luckily, you know, we'd gone on a holiday there. We knew things were getting bad, but we didn't realise, you know, at that stage. So we've been there more than lockdown. We've been there for, uh, I don't know, three and a half months now. We were there, <laughs> not there now. <laughs> and then as soon as lockdown eased up, you, you, you rushed back to Bath to see your lovely mum. I would, I, when you saw me go and see my gorgeous mum, so she, my mum is amazing. She is my inspiration. She is so um, creative. And I think, you know, the creative juices have been flowing through the family via her, probably. Um, her, uh, grand, my great, great grandfather was a Royal Academician artist. So he had paintings in the, in the Royal Academy in the sort of Victorian times. Um, I, my, my sister trained as a textile designer. My brother's a photographer. So we're all in that kind of creative world. Actually, my other brother is, has his own insurance company, so he's like the only one. <laughs> he's not widely creative. And um, was it an amazing feeling seeing her again after? Yeah, I mean, she's been quite careful. You know, she's been isolating and being very sensible. And so when I went to see her, it was the first time out, and we went to visit the new Neptune. Well, it's not that new now, but we went to visit the Neptune store in Bath, which is her favourite little outing. They, they know her very well in there. She's the kind of brand ambassador. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, I suppose, you know, I get to South Africa once every, you know, three, four months in a good year. Um, yeah. And I suppose this year I may not go at all. And I have that feeling when I, 
when I see my family and you haven't seen them for so long. But I think now it's ever more poignant because, you know, if somebody does get sick, you possibly can't see them. And it must have been a, must have been a very special moment to reunite. Well, and lovely. have you been in lockdown with children? Yeah, I've had a, I've had a blend of my kids. Um, I've had um, Daisy with us most of the time, who is our eldest. She's uh, 28 and she's a fine artist. Um, so she she made a career of painting. So she is now um, a full, full blown portrait painter and landscape painter. Um, so she- Yeah, so I actually thought Daisy was just a, just a portrait painter, but then you posted this amazing seascape she did yeah. um, the other day. Now, yeah. how long does that take her? She paints, um, depending on the size of the, uh, of the canvas, Justin. So if it's a smallish one, then she'll do it in one go. So it will be, to capture the light, you know, you can't, yeah. um, you can't keep painting for hours and hours because the light's changing so fast. So she paints it as she sees it on plein air. Yeah. Um, on plein air means outside, you know, it's not from photos, it's literally out there with her brushes, come rain or shine. Um, and then, a, but a portrait, if she was doing a portrait commission, um, that could be anything from um, six to 12, three hour sitting. So if she was gonna paint your portrait, you would have to go to her studio and, and sit, sit still for three hours at a game. Because that, there's, an, there was an, there's an amazing um, painting, it was there in your, in your house in London, which I saw, which, uh, which is absolutely enchanting and captivating. So for those who don't know, Daisy Sims Hilditch is, um, is Emma's daughter and she's a painter. And your other daughter, Betty, is also creative and also been painting. Yeah, so, so has she been, been with you in lockdown as well? Well, sadly not. She's been in Wiltshire where the kind of home base is um, with her um, boyfriend, her actually her fiance. Um, so they set up camp there and she is also an artist. Um, she um, has trained as a set designer. Um, hello, little vintage shack. <laughs> I like that name. <laughs> um, she, she, she trained at uh, Wimbledon as a set designer for film. And um, so that's what she's been doing. But during this period, obviously, there aren't any movies being made at Pinewood. Everything is closed. And yeah. Shepparton, all the studios are closed. So in her lockdown, she's been getting her paintbrushes out and been doing some really beautiful work in acrylic. Very um, joyful, very... Um, graphic, just very different to Daisy's work. So yeah, Betty's. How wonderful. And I, I must agree with something. I mean, you look far too young to have children who are nearly 30. <laughs> it's um, it's I know. crazy. But it is, must feel crazy. I must <laughs> <laughs> Emma, how did you become an interior designer? Diet. Diet. <laughs> how Sorry. did you become an interior designer? How did that journey happen for you? I, I, I was, um, I dreamt that I wanted to be, a, a, you know, I was designing my bedroom aged about 10 or 11 and trying to, you know, make my own room nice. And then I started to do when I was about 15 or 16, I had my first sort of um, boyfriend and, you know, I was designing his room. Um, but I then didn't go to art school to do um, interior design because I hadn't done mm, A-level art or whatever it was. I'd done the wrong A-level, so I couldn't go to art <laughs> school. Really stupid. But I... <laughs> Anyway, I said, okay, well, I'll go and do a business studies course. So I did that instead. Um, and then I ended up in the film industry. And so I worked, at, I worked um, in the production um, company of Ridley Scott um, in London, RSA Film, which was an amazing training for me. What a, um, like a baptism of fire with Ridley Scott. Yeah, I mean, it's it's quite hard. something. Yeah. And, and really for him, you know, for that, my life was before I met John and I was just um, immersed in this really creative, dynamic world of making the most incredible commercials for TV. And I learned just how, you know, I learned how to kind of be organized and efficient, I guess, because if you weren't, then you just got chucked out, you know, they, they wouldn't allow people, and you worked hard, you worked bloody hard, you know, you were there till 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Um, it was not easy, but it was a really good introduction to, kind of, you know, business, the business And world. getting it done. Yeah. And then I met John and then we kind of fell in love <laughs> and um, he was a soldier at the time and um, he basically um, had never had any creative background, none whatsoever. Um, John, John was a soldier, he'd been in the army for eight years in the Coldstream Guards, he'd been to um, Northern Ireland, he, you know, we'd done all his sort of um, tours and things and when we got married he basically, we had to make a decision, was he going to carry on doing that army job? Or was he going to do something completely different? And I think the two of us 
sort of felt, what, what, what have we got to lose? Let's both kind of go for it. So we set up our own business, both our businesses on the kitchen table. Amazing. Um, and I, curtain, I did mine as curtain making to start with. Is that where you started, as a curtain making? Yeah. So how did you learn to sew? I learned to sew at school. I, I got the needlework prize for being the best seamstress at school. Um, while while other, other members of the um, class were kind of sewing the shirt arm on the wrong way round and, you know, having a real laugh. I was taking Like a sewing bee, yeah. Um, so I loved sewing. So I learned how to make proper curtains and that was actually a really good introduction. Um, Thank you. And I, um, and, I, and then um, at the same time, John and his partner Giles were trying to figure out what to do with a, a new business. And, and so Neptune was kind of created on the kitchen table and the first product was a hammock. And, and I didn't really get involved with Neptune for, for a long time. I was just doing my thing um, for the first five years and they were kind of in the garden industry, really. That's where it all yes. started. Then. And then... Um, and then they started to sort of realize that garden furniture was really not a good business to be in in the UK. Um, if you wanted to, um, you know, um, basically find a, a, a stressful business, then try and sell garden furniture when it's pouring with rain. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they started to think about interior and I was pushing for that because by that stage I was really saying that there is no where I can find a beautiful, solid timber um, no MDF, no chipboard, no nothing, nasty, you know, good quality piece of furniture that is affordable at, with a nice design. <laughs> so, so that's where it started really for them. And, and I kind of have been involved with them ever since really as well, just creative, creative. And work. you have a very beautiful, and I have been there and it's, it's just quite an environment. Your Sims Hildish headquarters. Yes. When did you move there? Yeah. So we... Um, so my business carried on on the kitchen table, it evolved organically. I hope people who are watching today will be perhaps spurred on by the fact that, you know, you don't have to have smart, flashy premises to, to run a successful business. You know, uh, many businesses now can be run from home. That's yeah. the thing about the world we live in. It's so, um, you know, easy to be able to sort of communicate like we are now. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I was like that at home on the kitchen table and then I moved into the front sitting room and I had to change things around at home so I could have a bigger office. And I think about six, seven years ago now, we, were, we got up to about eight people at home working in the front sitting room. And, and at that stage, it was very stressful for John and he was like, oh my God, you know, you, you just, you've got to learn to shut the door on your office. You can't go in there at nine o'clock at night. And it was getting a bit difficult. Three kids at home. So we, we eventually said, right, I'm going to move out. And we were looking for premises on an industrial estate to start with or something like that. And, and I just, I kept coming back to the fact that what people loved about coming, about working with us as a design team was that they loved coming to my home and they wanted to replicate that and they wanted the experience of a home. So I ended up thinking I've got to make a home. My studio has got to look like home. So, so I, we eventually found this pub that actually had been on the market for about three years. No one wanted it. It was very unloved. Um, it's a historic building. It's a listed building. Um, but it was in a totally and utter, utter sort of ramshackle state. What is you... on the kitchen? They want to know what your green paint colour is. Oh, gosh. It's going to go because it doesn't work for me at all. Um, it was a big experiment. I don't actually love it, but it's great. It sort of is great. It's Bansha. It ma oh, it's Bansha. It mm, it's Bansha. It was, <laughs> it was shaded white. And yeah. then I got this whole thing, no, no, I didn't want a white kitchen anymore. Right. But I should have got navy blue. But anyway, anyway, it's not about me. Um, so, because your, your, your studio is so beautiful and it's, you, it does feel like that. It feels intrinsically like you. And one of the things I wanted to ask you was that you, you're known for the sort of quite elegant country style and you obviously have in your head how you sum up your brand. But is it, a distillation of yourself or is it something that you've pinpointed that's how you want to decorate professionally yeah no it's a hundred percent just come from um from me I and mean, it's just like it's just the way that um naturally what appeals to me and i guess it's this whole um, combination of um selection of products that just fit together in a way that is authentic it has that kind of feeling of a, a home and i think what we try 
what we don't try, what we love doing, it's not hard to do it, is to try and make houses into homes. Yeah. Because it's so important. I mean, like your beautiful home, you know, it's a collection of things. It's not just put together in a show house way and like, bang, there it is. You know, it's got to have that feeling of um, authenticity that we have sourced antiques, we've found beautiful pieces of art, we've managed to um, combine different textures and, and furniture styles. Um, and it isn't easy. I know it isn't easy. We make it hopefully look quite easy, but it isn't when you, when when you're faced with this world of product out there. As a, I guess as an amateur or as a person just trying to make your home look beautiful. Um, but yeah, so so that's that's really me. <laughs> I think. So, and so 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 what's the next big thing for you or for Cynthia Ditch? Gosh. Um, we're getting we're getting to do some really wonderful work in um we're trying to sort of broaden i guess the uh the geographic um you know footprint of where we are um we have done a little bit of work abroad that would be lovely to do more i've always wanted to do a ski chalet that's kind of like my dream um i think i could just imagine now how a ski chalet would look if i was to do one yeah um, but I haven't been commissioned for anybody out there who's got one, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and Emma, how do you instill in your team? I mean, the people in your team are wonderful from Liz to Gemma to all of them. They just are wonderful people. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a culture that comes across in dealing with the people at Sims Hilditch, whether it's the lady who pays the bill or, yeah. or the person asking for samples or the people doing presentations. And I've heard, um, you know, through from the, the client experience itself is, is a really wonderful experience. Now, and that's imbued with you and who you are. So how do you take a designer out of college um, or a designer who's had a couple of years experience into your team and instill that culture into them? Or do you look for a certain personality type or what would your advice be to a young designer today? Can I put that all into one sort of thing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the first point is, you know, we had, um, a while ago we decided you know we needed our values what were our values what was the business when someone comes to us as a new employee what do we say to them about us that makes us different to any other design practice and um so we have these values we have this set of values there are four of them so the first is aim high um the second is I love that. do the right thing the right thing is always the the right thing <laughs> you know when it's not the right thing so do the right thing by your customer, do the right thing by your um, partners like you, you know, everybody we work with, everybody who touches us, we must do the right thing and um, do it together. So that means a team and, you know, teams are what makes great businesses, I think. Yeah. So we always try and work as a team. And if we um, are struggling, if one person's struggling with something, then, you know, we try and get this sort of culture of helping and of collaborating in the, in the business. And the last one is keep it real. And I think keeping it real is just like, don't get too stressed because it's only, <laughs> someone's like, it's only interior design. You know, we're not trying to rule the world. We're just trying to do, do the right thing and do a nice job, really. So that's- I love that. I love your four values. I think those are they're beautiful. And I, I haven't heard that. I love that. Um, Emma, I, I want to talk a little, we, we must talk a little bit about Neptune. Yeah. And I know, I know that, and you have answered a little bit <laughs> of what I wanted to ask because you and John, as you said, you started, and I did know because you told me before that you started on the kitchen tables, and um, Neptune's become such a giant, um, such a household name. For anyone who's not from the UK, um, Neptune is a household name in a lifestyle of, of kitchens and paints and accessories and libraries and furniture and just so many beautiful things that are accessible um, to, to the British public. And yeah. how do you and John separate and not talk about sit on the boat and talk about the next unit or kitchen island or <laughs> light fitting or but someone has just asked me isn't that neptune's values and they're absolutely right i'm really impressed that you know neptune's values too so being husband and wife <laughs> and being very close to each other um, and working very closely we are really close partners and we share so much in our businesses and our business lives you know obviously and we sat together and talked about our values. And um, I literally, I could not think of a better set than, than the ones that Neptune have. And so we 
both feel very strongly that these are values that we both imbue in our businesses. So that's why they are Neptunes as well. And so they align. And how much are you pulled into <laughs> Neptune? I mean, do they say, we need you, you know, what do you think of this? And we think of doing that. And... Basically have a, I have a role there, which is, um, it's, it's basically the kind of curation of, of the product in terms of just, um, you know, they call, I think I, I'm called brand guardian, but I think we talked about it being almost the creative guardian. So it's basically, um, you know, the, the aesthetic, the look, the, the core um, collections of furniture, the color palette, it's all of that really. And we, we have a weekly meeting and we talk about everything creative. And then the wonderful team at Neptune, which is a, a design team of, it's only about eight people. So it's not a huge team. Um, but some really talented furniture designers there and product designers who work out work on the collections um, and do some lovely things there. So yeah, I'm just... You set it on a very beautiful yellow for the latest catalogue. Um, saffron. Like a, I, yeah, like a, a saffrony, buttery... Saffrony coloured sofa. Yeah, really, really, really wonderful. And, and the look was very sort of... Um, like it had, it had the, the, the bushels of things hanging down and it had the dog and it had the old stone floor. And, and I just thought it was such a lovely yeah. aesthetic of, of, cause, cause the Neptune cabinetry and furniture is very clean and fresh. And then it, it just, it just got the message across so clearly that you could actually throw it into a more ramshackle building and it works so beautifully. Someone's asking, how would you promote a small business to attract the right clients? It's a really good one. And I would actually, now this is, I'm learning, I'm taking a leaf out of Daisy's book here, my daughter. You know, in the old days I would have said, oh, you should, you know, um, consider all these sort of marketing angles. But I have to say right now, um, you know, Instagram is such an incredible tool. And, um, you know, for Daisy, she's found that as almost as telling her people. Pictures. Um, we do work virtually. I've, uh, I have worked virtually with clients in the US, yes, and I'm very happy to again. Um, I, I think um, now it's very easy to do that with the communications we have. We had a client from the US who we did their whole house for um, in London, but they were in the US and basically we did the house through sending samples and things and it worked really well. Yeah, I think virtual. I think once you, I think it's a confidence thing with virtual, with, with virtual um, communication, um, yeah. and it's much more intense because there's no no sort of preamble and just have a cup of tea and you yeah. go straight into a meeting. So I think my advice to people would be virtually to not back to back yourself. Give yourself a breather between meetings because I mean, poor Alistair at the moment he's just back to back and he I comes out it. of his office sometimes and he's had six calls in a row and you just I can I can see he's yeah. kind of Phew! it's a lot. It's extraordinary, and also you you find that you're not even getting up to walk around, so you're actually doing less work, less exercise than you were when you were going exactly, to exactly. Um, and um, <laughs> so you live near Bath. You spend a lot of time near in London. Um, what does what do you get from London that you find you don't get from Bath, and the other way around, other than your gorgeous mother? Oh, I, I think that the um, I think that the Chelsea Design, uh, Chelsea Harbour Design Centre, which is just down the road from here, I walk there, um, is such an amazing resource. Um, then obviously there's the whole of sort of King's Road, there's all the furniture brands there, George Smith, um, you know, then you go down Lots Road. There, there's a lot there just in that small sort of... Yeah, um, that whole Chelsea Design Quarter is wonderful. Exactly. Um, so I love that. My dad <laughs> lives the next street round the corner. So that's why I ended up here in this in this road because I wanted to be near him. So um, he is literally my neighbour. So I'm, I'm seeing him tonight, which would be lovely. Um, we're going to get an Indian takeaway together. You know, you know, Emma, I have to just say your the values that you've mentioned, notwithstanding, just just this last sort of half an hour that we've been talking, your your sense of community and family and um, and sort of special times comes across so clearly. And I can see that. I mean, I went to. I went, and I went really out of more um, kind of um, inquisitiveness than needing to go myself, but I went to one of the projects that we supplied some pieces for you for in Bath, in one of the Crescents in Bath. And I walked into this place and I thought, this place could not have been installed in the last couple of weeks because it's just, it's so homely. And, oh. and I get, I'm getting that completely, I, I'm understanding that, that you, you, you sort of imbibe that into, into what you do. Yeah. Um, and that's, and that, that is a wonderful gift to give people. Um, I think because you don't, you're, 
the spaces that I've seen of yours don't, you know, spaces that I've seen sort of digitally and spaces that I've seen in person, they don't give a person, don't tell a person how to live, but they make the person's living very comfortable. And I think there's a big difference in that. You know, you go into those houses that tell you you have to live in a certain way. Um, but I think your, your, the houses that you do um, just make people very comfortable in the way they live. Mm, thank but you. you also have a sense of incredible elegance and, and, and a little bit of grandeur in, 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 in some of them, um, which, is, which comes across very, very well. What's your favorite color? <laughs> I love this green. Um, someone was asking what this wallpaper was. And do you know, this for me is just the most heavenly story because Martha Armitage, I think she must be, she might not want me to say this, but I think she must be coming up for 90 and she still hand blocks this wallpaper from her studio in London with her daughter who may be in her late 60s or 70s. So it's the most amazing family business. and. These designs were done in the 60s, I think. I might be wrong about that, but they almost remind me of a sort of um, child, um, a childhood book I had of that kind of era of the 60s kind of um, block printed. I just had this book about, um, I can't quite remember, it's something about a dragon or something. Anyway, but it was like the illustrations were exactly this. So when I saw it, I was like, right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I love, I love that. And I, I love anything which has a story attached to it, I think. I think things come alive when they've got, you've got something to talk about. So this beautiful print here, um, I don't know, you can't really see it. I'm just going to turn this tiny bit there. So um, that is... Is that your ski chalet? It's not my ski chalet, I wish it was. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a hotel called Ch Chesa Grishuna, um, and it's um, in the Alps, and I can't remember the name of the beautiful resort now. Um, it's near Gustav. No, it's not. Oh God, I need help. Someone tell me where it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a photograph in the 60s and Don and I went, went to this place about five years ago and stayed there. And then as I was walking down the King's Road about um, just before Christmas last year, I saw this picture of it. And I just thought that is just so beautiful. And um, it reminds me of, of the holiday we had. So I, I bought it for John's Christmas present. <laughs> um, it's a nice, it's a lovely foil with the, with the wallpaper. It sounds like this helicopter is going to land on my head. But yeah. I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, I suppose, that's, uh, I suppose that's being back in London. Christmas, that's so yeah, Somebody said that it's in Closters. Yeah, that's where it was. There you go. Very, Isn't it very... wonderful that actually we can have this community where we're having a conversation, somebody can give us some information. I really, I really think that's, that's it's absolutely wonderful and special. Um, what do you encourage your, your clients to spend the budget on? Like if you would say, right, we can do this and that and that in a, in, a, in, in, a, in a certain budget, but that's where you need to spend the money. What do you... Hmm. Um, I, would Advise. Always, I would always start with the, the hard um, landscape of the building, the architectural elements, because they're the elements that um, are really important to get right and also to um, give the property longevity. So um, I think you know, this idea of being able to concentrate first on the architecture, the, the joinery. If you're, going to, if you're going to redesign a room, do you want a bookcase in there? I think that's really important because you know, the joinery is going to be there for 20, 30 years. A sofa or an armchair might not be. So try and get, try and spend money wisely. Divide your pot up, I would say, and make sure that you have enough money for the, FF, the furniture, FF&E as we call it in the trade, furniture, fittings and equipment. Make sure you save enough money for good curtain making. Being a curtain maker myself, <laughs> they, good curtains are really important because... Um, Bad curtains are very obviously, you know, they look awful when they're not made well. Um, yes, I used to, when I worked for Nikki, one of the first things he taught me was, um, he said, you can use a really cheap fabric and have it beautifully made. Is. But the best fabric made badly is always going to look terrible. That is totally right. That's a very good bit of advice. Um, you know, absolutely, you know, hand-headed and with nice interlining, um, a very inexpensive linen can look a million dollars. So I would definitely say... Um, Bathrooms for me are a sanctuary. They're a place which um, almost, you know, should have that extra element of luxury about them. I think having a, a really great bathroom is, um, it's just that gives you that feeling of when you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth and everything has a place and everything's been designed thoughtfully. So you've got um, mirror cabinets that open and you can charge your toothbrush and you've got light where you want to do your makeup and you've got storage and, you know, that kind of thing matters, I think, for a 
doing the design well and getting the architecture and the bones done properly is, I'd say, really valuable. And you did that in your house in London. You really focused on the bathrooms. They really are quite glorious. We have. Um, and you know, also space planning. I mean, we go back a stage before the architecture. And actually, if you're really taking a house apart and you're starting again, um, you know, the, um, can you repeat the name of the maker? Yeah, so it's Martha Armitage um, is the, um, the wallpaper, uh, the, the designer of the wallpaper. Um, I can't remember who represents Martha Armitage. Do you know, Justin? No, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. It may be, it may be, it may be Helen that she sits there, but I don't know. Or it could be Turner and Givon. I don't know. No, it's not. Not then. Yeah. Um, we'll find out and let you know. <laughs> um, but no, so sorry. Go, um, Hamil thank you. Nay Roberts. That's my lovely friend, Nay. Hamilton Weston um, is the supplier of the wallpaper. Um, and Martha Armitage is the designer. So, yeah. Brilliant. So we're talking about space planning. So you, you find that space. that's very important. You know, do, you have, do you have a really good relationship with the planners in, in, the, in the South Cotswolds where you are? What district, what district is that where you, where you mainly uh, work in? South Cotswolds. We're on the border of North Wiltshire and, and, um, and um, South Gloucestershire. Um, and actually our studio is in South Gloucestershire, but our postcode is Wiltshire. So it's one of those really confusing ones. You're right. But you're on, on, the, on the edge. <laughs> yeah. I um, mean, I, we don't do planning applications or list of building applications in our studio. We work with architects locally yeah. or PR and they would deal with that. So it's really important to work with an architect who you have confidence will, will have a good relationship with the planners really and the, and the listed building officers. Yeah. If the house is listed. Yeah. Is your house in the country? Um, grade two only, which yeah. is which is nice, but, oh, but still, yeah. yeah, it's lovely. But you know, we it's it's exactly as it was, you know, when it was built, and yeah. um, we'd love to we'd love to we keep saying in this beautiful spring that we've had, which is, hasn't been so hot. We keep saying, I know, let's have lunch in the conservatory, and we go, oh, we don't have a conservatory, or um, <laughs> because it's it's exactly as it was when the Georgians built it, and. Um, Alistair would love to love to do um, some kind of add-on. I think not only to because the house could do with something with a with a, with a bigger reception room, but also um, I think he wants to make his mark on the house. But every plan, every single consultant, planning officer, you know, is like whatever you do, you're going to wreck the house. Just leave it alone. So we we're going to settle with renovating a barn up the drive and um, sit in oh, the barn. How lovely! <laughs> how lovely. I think. What Old buildings is just such a privilege. And, um, you know, you do have to remember that, you know, I mean, some of the buildings we're working with are 500 years old and they've had such an incredible history about them. And I think, um, you know, I learned something really good from a, a builder stroke architect who had a, I mentioned it in one of my little videos I did. Um, we did a talk on hotel hotel design and the Femme de Marie in, um, uh, the Femme de Marie in Provence, um, no, the Bastide de Marie in Provence and the Femme de Marie in, um, in um, Megere, the two hotels which have, have been uh, built, designed and run by the Sibue family. I'd really recommend both of them, they're amazing. But what he taught us, we were staying there about 15 years ago and he was building this beautiful French kind of barn building and he just said, it's so important to preserve what you've got and actually look at the building and see the character and try and work with these amazing features that you've already got because trying to create those kind of elements of character is really hard. Yeah. So, you know, keep the, keep that history. And your home in Wiltshire is, is really old, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, we our house is built in 1790. So, um, it was a cottage. We bought it when we uh, first got married. It was derelict. Um, I haven't done any Instagram videos on my cottage yet, but I will um, in Wiltshire. And um, it was three little workmen's cottages, um, really, really beautiful workmen's cottages, but completely derelict. It had been used as a school uh, right through the, um, I don't know, from the 1960s to no earlier than that maybe the 40s or something. It was, it was used as a school anyway, bequeathed as a school uh, by the rich landowner. Um, and, and when we found it, it was just derelict, really, de really derelict. And so we took it on, all <laughs> warts and all, and it was listed. And we managed to convert it into a 
three bedroom cottage. So that was that worked really well for us for the first 15 years of our life. And then um, subsequently, we managed to buy um, a Cotswold stone barn, which was almost attached to it, but not quite. And we managed to link the two together. So that's what happy we managed to kind of extend the property um, as the need grew for a bigger you know, family home. How lovely. So if you would give any <laughs> advice to, to somebody who was who was planning on on working on a on a historic house. Um, yeah. And and needed to extend, needed to create something new, needed more space, or as you said, work for you for 15 years and then yeah. you, you know, what would your advice be? Um I think first thing is interview a few architects, um, have a look at the work that they've done. If you're planning to extend, obviously you need an architect. If you're just planning to do an internal refurb, then a company like ours would be per yeah. perfect. We can work with historic buildings, no problem, but you can't change things. You can't change the fabric of the building without, you know, listed building consent. But choose, choose, choose people to work with who you feel you're going to get along with because obviously you've got to like the work that they do. Um, but you've got to make sure you get along with them as well because you might be working with them for a year or even two. Yes, and that, and that relationship's really personal, isn't it? And if you're a designer like, like I am, which I, I think you are, is, it's a personal thing. You take someone's, you, you take on someone's home as a, as a personal thing. I mean, I feel like that about almost every piece of furniture we make. So, um, and I think you do that with your, the homes you take on. You, you feel it. You, you really feel it. Live and breathe it, don't you? Totally. I mean, we're working on one at the moment in Lancashire, which is, um, it has been in the same family for 500 years. Come and on. It's a, I know. I can't wait. I mean, it's so amazing. I can't wait for it to be finished because it's been, yeah, it's been pretty much two and a half years in the making. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful hall up in Lancashire. Um, and it was basically um, in its original state, so incredibly um, uh, run down, just totally run down. Um, the man who died, uh, I said buffering, what does that mean? <laughs> I, think, I think somebody may have a delay in the connection. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, um, so, so the old man had died in his armchair in one room in the house and then my client inherited it and basically had to sell some land to be able to afford to do the work. But as a result, he's now able to do this incredible restoration project. Um, and it's going to have a huge, it's got a huge central atrium. We've knocked out a lot of the old Victorian sort of domestic quarters. Now, I, you know, when we say preserve everything there are some things that don't work to be preserved so no exactly so yeah that's that's what's happening there it's a really fun project <laughs> and what is your approach to accessorizing it is just my size go keep freezing oh i will be posting this to instagram tv if somebody wants to wants to yeah, catch we, up. We, we would love to post it on our feed as well if that's okay yes no we'll send it to you absolutely then, uh, um and what How, you what's your approach to accessorizing? Right. Accessories are really key. Really, really key. Um, they're almost like, um, well, they're not even the icing on the cake. They're more than that. They're kind of like, they're really fundamental, I think. And, um, do you know, I think accessories are, um, often a client will feel like by that stage, you've sort of talked to them about the cost and you've explained the furniture pieces and you've gone through all the budget documents and you've said this, this. And then they think, oh, I don't want to spend any more money. I, I don't, you know, let's just go with what you've suggested, Emma. Just stop, yeah. We'll do the accessories later. But quite frankly, it's a big job to um, make a house feel like a home. And I think that's the bit that we then take on for many of our clients now. They say, please, can you just make it feel really beautifully accessorized? So for me, flowers and vases are a really big thing. Um, vases, yes, you do some wonderful videos. And you're a big fan of garden flowers. Love God, love anything that's from the garden. And if you can, if you're lucky enough to have a garden, or you can go out into the wildlife and <laughs> pick things from the hedgerow. It doesn't have to be roses. It could be, you know, beautiful. Just it could just be um, particularly at this time of year. Yeah. So vases in all different shapes and sizes, I think, are really really key. Uh, books is another really important one. I love appealing to all the senses, so I like to think about, you know, um, the atmosphere that you can create. So I think having a, um, a lovely smell when you walk into a room can make something feel just so 
different, you know, having a scent. So perhaps having uh, we buy Aquaflor from um, vet from Florence. Aqu Aquaflor, it's called, and it's the most beautiful brand. Have a look at it. Um, F Aqua F L O R. Yeah, that's right. And you get these fantastic, huge, great jars of this incense spray for scent um, room diffusers. Um, so yeah, candles, diffusers, all that sort of thing. You have to be a little bit careful, I think, not to overpower a house with all of that. What's new for the autumn in Neptune, Emma? <laughs> our secret. Yeah, that's the way can see. <laughs> we can see. <laughs> Lots of amazing, amazing things. Lots of new furniture, beautiful colors. <laughs> I'm not allowed to tell you. <laughs> 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 um, and Emma, we're going to run out of time, and we've had a very, um, very wonderful audience who has um, who, who've tuned in. I want to know, um, finally, um, what are you going to take away with you from lockdown? Gosh. As we all kind of go back to whatever the, the new normal, which I'm so bored of that expression, but whatever the new normal is going to be, what do you, what, what do you, what do you feel is are you going to take away as your kind of lesson? Uh, I know it sounds really cheesy, but I think um, spending um, this amount of time with the family, with um, the people close to us, you know, our, our close family, and also making sure that we're in contact with the family that we can't be with on the Zoom thing every other weekend, or at least trying to keep in touch with my parents, with my mum, you know, with my, my siblings. That has been really lovely. And if you think about it, before lockdown, we didn't do that. We maybe called them twice a year. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've had a family quiz um, um, with, with the, the other side of the family. We've had a family quiz every single Sunday since we started. And so, every Sunday did the quiz on and on. And um, it, interestingly, Alice's half-sister, um, her boyfriend is my brother's girlfriend's brother. So there's this whole kind of connection. And he did this crazy quiz in which he quizzed all of us on Bruce? their family. Oh, that's so nice. That's and he was so saying, what did we have for dinner on the first night that I came to see you guys? And all that kind of crazy quiz. Um, and you said, you're right. We have, it's, an, it's, it's wonderful to have, to, we, we connected a lot more than, than, we, um, than, we, than, than we ordinarily would. And I think, the, I think you're absolutely right. That's very, very special. That's amazing. And then the last thing for me is just the, appreciation of nature and again um nature is is a massive um part of me i'm a country girl i was born brought up in the country i've never really lived in the city apart from kind of when i was in my early 20s and i think being ha having that time to actually spend more time in the country more time outside more time um, in the garden going for walks um, we bought some electric bikes i cannot tell you how amazing they have been yeah. absolutely i mean they're not cheap but honestly, it's the best thing I've ever done. I love them. <laughs> I just go for it. That's, um, that's, that's, um, and you don't have to, you don't have to pedal so hard when you go uphill, do you? So you? What you can do is you can just go for much more exciting bike rides. So, you know, normally you dread that big hill, but actually this is like, you, you know, you can do five hills on the electric bike. And like you were saying, you stayed at Care Hayes. Well, to get to Care Hayes from St. Moore's would be fine on an electric bike. Really? Yes, because it's quite far. Yeah. Yes, we've done it. But you would never think of that. You know, it's a long way, but, you know. Yeah. Oh, how wonderful. Um, Emma, as my mother has commented, um, you have been utterly charming, she said, oh. chat, which, <laughs> I, um, which, which I, I've just so loved speaking to you. And we're going to run out of time. Like, literally, they're gonna, the, clock, the clock starts <laughs> dialing down in a few minutes. Um, okay. But I've loved speaking with you. It's been really, really special and really lovely. And we, you know, um, I will tell everybody that we, we've been trying to get together for dinner for about six months. <laughs> and there's always been something that's had to change or move or something. And then the final one was literally, we were, I think I looked at my diary to, to, to check up and we were meant to have dinner on the 7th of April. And then <laughs> it just kind of didn't happen because of lockdown. So we will do it as soon as it's all over. Um, you must come to us and so we'll come to you. We'll make it work. Um, and, and have a lovely in-person catch-up. Yeah, well, it's been such an amazing honour to be on your show. I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> I said to Alison the other day, I said, I've got my... He said, you do not have a show, Justin. <laughs> but yes, it's... Um, Aqu I know... Someone has just asked what the Aquafloor favourite scent is. I think it's... Fit. I think they do a fig one, and they do the most amazing one, which smells like tobacco for men. It's like Yes, the tobacco one's beautiful. Tobacco-y... Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And it's really special. Um, but 
I've I've so loved speaking with you, yeah. and it's 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 been an absolute privilege to have you have you on the show. And I'm very pleased that we we spoke about Daisy's beautiful paintings and about um, Neptune and and about Sims Hilditch and um, just keep doing that beautiful work. Those beautiful beautiful projects. They they really are homes, as you say. And and Thank so the, the listeners as well for all their lovely positive feedback, which has been very very lovely to hear. And I'm very honoured and feel very yeah. It's been lovely. So all the best to everybody. Please keep um, doing the food videos, Emma, and please keep doing your, your um, the, the flowers too, because you, you're very natural okay. on, that, on that food thing. I was thinking, oh my God, I could never do a food thing, because that, <laughs> and you just sort of, and there's a bit of this, and a bit of that, and the thread is there, <laughs> and, and you're not blasé about it all. You're kind of, kind of thinking as you're going, and then it's like, oh my God, there's a whole thing. The and I, I want you to go and make these parfaits. I want you to go and make your parfaits. The last breakfast one I did, I literally, John said, I, he came into the kitchen and I was getting breakfast ready. I said, look, do you mind just quickly filming this one? Because I think it's quite nice. And, and he was like, I have got a meeting in three minutes. I have to go to that meeting in three minutes. And I was like, right, okay, stop the camera. <laughs> it's so quick. And I, those are the best, really, because they're, they're natural. They're so natural. And I, and I love that. So keep doing what you're doing and we'll see you really soon. Thank you. All the best. And thank you for being on. It's been wonderful. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well, I have to say, people, I, in, I enjoyed that so much. And um, as my mum said, Emma, you are utterly charming. And um, I felt so kind of loud, and I hope I didn't dominate too much because she has this beautiful melodic voice and is as beautiful as sort of an English poise. What an English rose. I think that's exactly what I'm going to think of Emma as from now on, as a lovely English rose. And um, so thank you everyone for listening to our talk. I'm going to put it on live if anybody wants to recommend somebody to watch it or catch up. Thank you so much everybody for the wonderful comments as well. And I hope that everyone got the Margaret Armitage, um, Martha Armitage wallpaper. That's one to look up for sure. And also the Aquaflor um, scents that Emma loves. Um, next week, um, we're going to have William Bates. I did make a mistake last week. Next week, we've got William Bates. He um, is the American College of Building Arts, which is a fascinating, unbelievably interesting organization based in Charleston. So please do join us then. It'll go out, there will be information. Um, I've loved today's um, chat with, with Emma from my kitchen in London. Colors are Bancha. It didn't really work for me, but it's, it works sort of. Um, and thank you so much. It's been great fun as usual. Bye.